Canelo has been approved to face Sergei Dervinchenko by DAZN. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Now, this has been quite the the roller coaster ride for Canelo Alvarez. In the last few months, a lot has changed, a lot has happened, and we haven't even seen Canelo back in the ring. He last fought against Danny Jacobs, and he's been linked to fight from Jaime Munguia to, they said he wanted to fight Demetrius Andre to Caleb Smith to Triple G in a trilogy fight as high up as 175 against Sergey Kovalev. You know, which didn't really make sense since Kovalev was already scheduled and ordered to fight his mandatory in Anthony Yard. But now, you know, according to reports that were coming out at the time, Canelo wasn't approved to fight anyone from DAZN. There was like, you know, some disagreements and DAZN wanted him to fight either Gennady Golovkin versus or Sergey Kovalev. Now the reports that are coming out suggest that DAZN is okay with Canelo facing Sergey Dervinchenko to retain his IBF belt. You know, so I really feel like it's, it's kind of like when fighters negotiate a fight. When it's all over the place like this, it's usually not a good sign. You know, just from my perspective, it's not a good sign when there's no uniformity and when when negotiations in fights are so public that's usually not a good sign i feel like the big fights that have gotten done they go radio silent and there's not a bunch of media reports and different things surrounding it and then little little under the radar shit is happening behind the scenes and then all of a sudden the fight is announced to the public but with canelo it's just been one thing after another you know and to me, that shows a level of not being on the same page, either with what DAZN wants and Golden Boy wants or Canelo. Somebody is not on the same wavelength. Listen, I've stated my opinion before. As far as Kovalev, that fight didn't really make sense next. If Kovalev gets past Anthony Yard, then whatever. But I really, frankly, want to see the Anthony Yard Kovalev fight a lot more than Canelo moving up to 175. Um, Canelo really should be fighting Jamal Charlo or Demetrius Andrade. He's being ordered to... And see, listen, Charlo is the full WBC champion and Andrade is the full WBO champion. So there's really no excuse that anyone can ten, can make about why it has to be Dervinchenko. The, the bottom line is Golden Boy, they have lost a lot of prospects recently. A lot of their fighters who are undefeated have gotten knocked off. Other guys, you know, have disappeared like David Lemieux. I don't even know when he's fighting again. And they're down to really Canelo. Canelo's the big star. He's the the one generating probably the bulk of the income for for Golden Boy. And, you know, you don't really hear about some of these other Golden Boy cards, but you do hear about Canelo's fights, right? And I just feel like as a result, they're trying to put Canelo in these bouts that they feel, by and large, he has a better chance to win. You know, especially like Eastern European, European style guys, more so than his counterparts that fight fans have wanted to see since the 154 pound division, like Demetrius Andrade and Jamal Charlo, you know. Devinchenko again you can it's not a it's not a horrible fight I, I would prefer Devinchenko as opposed to Jaime Munguia moving up something like that but at the end of the day you could easily bypass a Devinchenko mandatory shot if you decided to fight Jamal Charlo who's the full WBC champion or if you chose to fight against a guy who's already aligned with the zone and as Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade. 
But it looks like Team Canelo, again, I, I think they don't want to put him in with those styles. And once again, new media proven right time and time again. Again, the Derenchenko fight, it's not the worst fight. It's that Derenchenko, he has an amateur pedigree. He gave Jacobs a tough fight. He just beat Jack Kukule. But again, I feel like Canelo, it's all strategic. Derenchenko was also hurt by Jack Kukule, who was coming up in weight. You know, and he, he got knocked down by Danny Jacobs. And if I know his recent pedigree and his recent fights and outcomes and how he looked, then you know, you mean to tell me the Canelo's team can't see the same thing? Versus you look at Demetrius Andrade or Jamal Charlo, they're not getting knocked down in their last couple of fights. They might have had good fights or tough fights, but it, they've looked overall fresher. And to me, that's why those fights aren't happening next. As far as Golovkin, I don't really care about that fight happening anytime soon. I think Golovkin is the one that wants it. He wants the payday and maybe a chance for vengeance and to avenge his loss to Canelo. But I, I think Canelo wants to age him out, make him suffer, make him wait, make him stand on his own two feet and pretty much put up a, a big fight on his own without clout chasing. I think Canelo feels Triple G's a, a clout chaser and trying to use his name and brand to get bigger and don't want to fight tough challenges himself. So that's my thoughts on it. Devonchenko, they're talking about the zone has approved it for October. Not a bad fight. I don't really know how much it moves the needle for the zone in terms of gaining subscribers and, you know, getting people to sign up for the app. It's it's better fight than Rocky Fielding for sure. But if if the Danny Jacobs fight did 600,000 concurrent views on the zone, then I would imagine Derenchenko will probably do less or about the same, if anything, because I don't see how Danny Jacobs already beat Derenchenko. So that unification, I don't see how a unification with Danny Jacobs in Cinco de Mayo weekend will do less than Derenchenko in October and Derenchenko already lost to Jacobs and Canelo just beat Jacobs. You get what I'm saying? So I don't really know what DAZN is doing in terms of their marketing. I don't really see the vision. I don't see the end game. I don't see how this is benefiting them. You know, fights like this, I can understand mandates and mandatories and stuff. And it is what it is. But those things could easily, as I mentioned, be avoided if Canelo actually fought against a champion in his division at 160, like Charlo, like Andre, or even a Caleb Smith. He's a champion at 168. He could say, I'm consolidating the belts because Caleb Smith, a guy he called out, Golden Boy called out, also has a version of the belt, the real version, the super version. And he's a big, strong, and that, you know, that would be big to me. That's what DAZN should push for, fights like that. David Benavidez in Texas, Caleb Smith in the UK, you know, if he's going to avoid the guys at 160, like Andre and Charlo, because Canelo fighting in the UK, that would be big news. Lomachenko is going to fight Luke Campbell. Imagine Canelo fighting in the UK, you know. Let me know what you guys think. I would also think the franchise champion, that wasn't a good look, but we'll see. We'll see what's announced. I don't know who Golovkin's going to fight because they're talking about Jaime Mugia. He could fight Jesse Vargas, and if Canelo picks Derenchenko, then I have no idea who they're going to make Golovkin fight. He's probably going to fight Pee Wee Herman or something. And I, I do think part of it is Canelo wants this for Golovkin. He wants Golovkin to look extremely bad. And I think Golovkin, his plan is going to work if, if my theory is correct. Because if Golovkin, Derenchenko, you can't say anything. I'm just telling you my thoughts about the event. I don't think it's a huge, major, like blockbuster event where it's going to do over a million. But it's, it's a stern, tough fight against a guy with amateur pedigree and uh, top 10, top 15 middleweight. So you, and he's a mandatory, so you can't complain too much. Me personally, my only gripe is I would rather see him fight. I'd rather see Canelo do what he said he wanted to do is unify and become undisputed at middleweight. You know, personally, I would rather see 
Sergey Dervinchenko versus Matt Korobov. I think they're at the kind of at the same level. Dervinchenko gave a good account of himself versus Danny Jacobs, and Korobov on late notice gave good account of himself versus Jamal Charlo back in December. So I would rather see that, you know, if I had it my way. But I have no idea who Gennady Golovkin is going to attempt to fight, to be honest. Because if Mungia is tied up with Jesse Vargas, Canelo's in the top 10 fight with Dervinchenko and a mandatory, then. You know, Golovkin, he's going to have to take a risk. So I think that's part of Canelo's plan. And it does work in that regard. If Canelo ties himself up with his mandatory, you can't really complain as much. You know, and if Mungia gets tied up, who's who's Triple G going to fight? Is he going to fight Andre? Triple G got to fight somebody, man. Let me know what you guys think. Canelo versus Derevchenko. They should. They got extended, so it looks like they'll they'll be fighting in October. I'll update you guys as soon as more information comes out. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We working. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing ego, the future of boxing. Yeah.